in the previous video, we were discussing uh, C's production function, constant elasticity of substitution production function. Then we were able to actually calculate what is the uh, the, what is the elasticity equal to, right? We were denoting it as sigma, and we calculated that this is 1 over 1 plus rho. Now, we also notice that if you would have a limiting case with rho equal to 1, the elasticity of substitution I'm sorry, a of rho equal to zero, elasticity of substitution would be one. However, we also notice that this value is not permitted over here. And because we, of course, cannot, uh, we cannot uh, divide by zero, we also notice a couple other uh, problematic things that this would imply. However, we also know that this is the elasticity of substitution that we have in Cobb Douglas production function. So there might be a connection, and actually it is, and we're going to show how it works. However, we, in the cases where we cannot sub simply substitute a number, right, like here, the proper way of approaching the problem is to take in the limit and see what happens to a given function as, as a variable or a parameter approaches some specific value. And this is what we're going to do here. However, this case of taking a limit here is very problematic. So in order, uh, in order to mitigate it, we need to introduce one more rule about limits. And this is L'Hopital rule. And L'Hopital rule is very simple. It simply says that if we have, a, we need to calculate a limit of a ratio of two functions with x approaching to some number a, it can be a finite number or it can be infinity or negative infinity, uh, doesn't matter. It turns out that this limit is going to be also equal to the limit of the ratio of derivatives of these two functions. Okay, let's see how it works. Let's choose something that we uh, know how to do. However, let's see if the rule works. Let's say we've got x, a uh, limit with x approaching 1 out of the function 1 minus x squared over 1 minus Okay, clearly, we can see that I cannot substitute here 1, because if I substitute here 1, I'm going to get 0 in the denominator, right? This is bad. So, let's apply a L'Hopital rule. What, what we're going to get is, I differentiate the expression over here, I get negative 2x, I divide this by derivative of the expression at the bottom, which is negative 1. So I need to calculate limit with x approaching 1 out of 2x, which is simply 2, because now I can simply substitute. And look, we usually, especially uh, in case, like when you had a problem like this in high school, the easiest way to deal with it would be to use the fact that 1 minus x squared is the same as 1 minus x times 1 plus x, right? So those two cancel each other out, and what we have over here is simply a limit of 1 plus x, which again, now when we can substitute, we see is 2. So the rule that we're not going to be proving here definitely seems to work. Now, the second thing is how it can help us with the problem of constant elasticity of substitution production function. 
Okay, first thing uh, we're gonna do over here is that I'm gonna logarithmize this function. So I'm gonna logarithm of q is equal to logarithm uh, of a plus natural logarithm of the rest of the expression. Okay, right, we remember the rule, the logarithm of a product, this product, product is the sum of logarithms. Also, uh, we see that the exponent over here can be taken into the front of the logarithm. So we're going to have negative 1 over rho. Okay, the next thing I can do over here is to move ln to the other hand side of the equation, ln a. And knowing the property of the logarithms that the difference of the logarithms is the logarithm of a quotient, we get that this is ln q uh, ln q over a. Okay, and look, this expression that you see over here is a little bit easier to work with than what we had in the beginning. So we're actually going to be using this expression for taking a level. Okay, what else can we do with this? Look, it, it already is expressed as a ratio, but maybe the better way of seeing it is if we put rho over here, let's do minus over here. Now, we see that if we're going to be taking a limit of this expression, again, we're going to encounter some issues, right? I cannot substitute zero over here. So maybe a better way of dealing with it is going to be by the use of L'Hopital log, rule. So this is going to be our m of rho because this is the variable with respect to which we're going to calculate the limit and this is going to be our n of rho. Okay, so now all we got to do is to calculate the appropriate derivatives. Let's start with n because it's super easy. We see the derivative of n with respect to rho is simply just 1, which makes our life very, very easy. More complex situation is over here, but still I don't think we'll have that many problems dealing with it. So, here we need to differentiate this uh, expression, which is a little bit more problematic, but we can definitely deal with that. So, this expression is a logarithm, of course we need to use logarithmic rule. We leave minus up front for now, and here we will have something, but according to logarithmic rule, of course, whatever is inside the logarithm goes into the denominator. Now, we need to differentiate what is inside. And look, here we need to use uh, here we need to use exponential rule. Let me just remind you that if we have y equals b to the power f of x, this derivative of this is going to be f prime of x uh, b to the power f of x times l of b. And we need to deal in the very same way with k and l. Okay, and look, what does it give us? We see that the here minus from the uh, 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 from the row goes up front, right? So we get that this is delta k to the power negative rho times l and k. Then we've got minus the one that goes from rho into the front times 1 minus delta l to the power negative rho 
times ln f. And now look, those two minuses actually very nicely cancel each other out, and here we get plus. Okay, and look, what we are able to do now is to calculate the limit of limit with rho approaching zero out of ln q over a, which of course is going to be defined as a limit of the ratio of these two functions. Oh look, n prime of rho is just one. So all we need to do is to calculate the limit of this. So we get that this is the limit with rho approaching uh, with rho approaching zero out of expression that we've got over here. So this is delta k negative rho ln k plus one minus delta l to the power negative rho ln l and over delta k to the power negative rho plus one minus delta times l to the power negative rho. And look, now we have no problems with substitution. Now, if rho is equal to zero, this turns into one. Now, if l rho is equal to or this turns into one, this turns into one, and this turns into one. What is even more interesting here is that, look what we've got left. Delta 1 minus delta, those two deltas are cancelling each other out. We are just dividing by 1 in a body. So what we got out of here is that is the expression LNK plus 1 minus delta ln L. However, again, we can start using properties of logarithms. We can take the coefficients and move them at to, to, uh, to the exponential position. Okay, so we've got ln k to the power of delta to plus ln l to the power of 1 minus delta. Then I can add the two, but I can combine the two because uh, some of the logarithms is a uh, 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 some of the logarithms is a product. Uh, 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 it turns into a product, so we've got that this is ln k delta l one minus delta, and look this. Quite already is reminding us of the cold uh, gas production function. It's missing an a, right? But it has, and it has additional logarithm. Then maybe we can deal with this. Well, of course we can. Okay. So look, what have we established here? Is that limit with rho approaching zero out of ln q over a is equal to ln k delta l one minus delta. Now look, there are two things that we can do over here. First, we can take uh, uh, we can take anti-log out of both sides, and then we can divide and multiply both sides by q, and then we get, of course, the result that we want. And look, what we have proven now is that uh, called Douglas production function with constant returns to scale. Right? Because of course here we've got constant returns to scale. Is a special case of 
uh, uh, cease production function with the raw going for zero. Okay, and I think you, you've heard enough about production functions. In the next videos, uh, in the following videos, we're going to start a new subject where we learn a little bit more about optimization. However, this time we're going to go one step further and we're going to do an optimization when we have uh, constraints in form of inequalities. In other words, our next topic is going to be concerning uh, nonlinear programming, which is simply uh, finding maximum or minimum uh, of a function of many variables when we have different uh, types of restrictions. And this is of course going to be topic of the next video. Thank you for your attention and take care.